Okay, so um, uh, as, as you've noticed, most of our speakers come from either UCSD or from our member companies, but every now and then we acknowledge that there's great talent also outside this beautiful campus and center. And today's great talent is Pio Kumar. Um, Kumar received his uh, bachelor's degree from IIT Madras and PhD from Washington University, and then has held in several uh, faculty positions where he has been a math professor and a double E professor and a bunch of other things, and has also worked on a whole lot of areas, uh, spanning uh, control, information theory, um, um, uh, statistics, uh, and most recently working on ad hoc networks and connectivity in them and scaling laws and being very influential in all these things. I think is also uh, the um, uh, university college professor at uh, Texas A&M and a member of National Academy of Engineering. And I think the only thing that rivals with uh, the number of um, uh, areas that he has worked on is the number of stories about him. So maybe I'll just share one, uh, and that is that uh, it, it is said that uh, at one conference he went swimming and got a little carried away until someone called that came and said, um, Kumar, you know your talk is right now, so he had to rush and give the talk in his bathing suit. So if, you, if, you're, worrying, if, if you're wondering why we are like about 10 minutes late, it's because we wanted to give him time to prepare. So uh, <laughs> Kumar, please. Well, uh, thank you, Alon, for that colorful introduction. Uh, actually, it's a great pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to be here and to see the beautiful synergy uh, being developed between the Wireless Communication Center and the ecosystem of uh, Qualcomm and all the other uh, innumerable companies. So it's actually uh, delightful. Okay. Uh, I have to press something to advance slides, right? Yes. You can. Ah, okay. So you don't miss Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, this this are or the yeah, this are. Okay, yeah. sounds good. All right. Okay, so uh, so I'm going to talk of uh, reliable communication over unreliable, uh, real-time communication over unreliable channels, and uh, oops. I'll just do that. I'll just do that. Okay, good. All right. So uh, I was going to give you a build-up here, but maybe I'll. Like, uh, press forward uh, quickly on that. Uh, so th over the course of time, there's been an evolution from event-driven computing to time-come event-driven computing. Uh, you know, computers were originally developed to do calculations. Uh, but then in uh, 1973, something very interesting happened. The field of real-time computation was born. And the only reason that was born was because you started interfacing computers with the, with the real world. Because if all you wanted to do is calculation, then time is irrelevant. As long as you do A before B, before C, before D, you're fine. And uh, in the 1990s, there's more and more interest on, uh, in hybrid systems, which are the interplay between differential equations and logical dynamics. Uh, differential equations modeling Newtonian systems and logical dynamics modeling computers. And uh, most recently, there's this whole uh, uh, field called cyber-physical systems, which uh, the phrase has been getting more and more attention. Okay. And in fact, uh, if you're interested, uh, there's a special article in for the centenary issue of uh, proceedings uh, on this topic. All right. Uh, so similarly, for time-driven communication, and I don't need to tell you all here that there's more and more interest in serving traffic with the delay constraints, and that the current internet doesn't provide any guarantees. So question that I'm going to talk about is how do we uh, deliver packets on time in a shared wireless network, and this is uh, work done uh, with uh, Yi Hong uh, Hao. Okay, so uh, let's skip this. Okay, so let's go back to 1973 when the field of real time computation was born, and the canonical model is this. Okay, uh, there's a notion of task, okay, and a task is a sequence of jobs. Okay, the Greek font doesn't show up, but that doesn't matter. It's a sequence of jobs with a period, okay? And uh, every task may have a different period. And the deadline for each task is the end of the period. So when the job comes in, it needs to be completed before the next instance uh, shows up. 
And uh, what people typically do is they develop an operating system that gets rid of as much non-determinism as possible, like caches, and uh, profile it and determine a worst case execution time. So for example, if you start a certain job at a certain time, it gets done after a while. And uh, the goal is to uh, complete all jobs and not miss any deadlines. Okay? And uh, Lou and Leyland uh, created this beautiful uh, policy called rate monotone scheduling, very simple policy, static priority policy. You simply give priority to tasks whose jobs arrive more frequently. Very simple. And, uh, and the result is beautiful that if the CPU you're loading is less than a certain number, which is approximately 70%, then you can guarantee that all jobs of all tasks will be completed before their deadline and uh, no misses at all. Okay? And this policy is so simple and the result is so neat. It's actually universally deployed in all your cars and planes and everything. Okay? So we take inspiration from this in trying to go to communications. The big challenge is this theory is completely deterministic. That is, uh, there's not, no randomness here. Okay? But when we go to the wireless world, we have uh, unreliable channels. So how can you frame this problem of providing timeliness guarantees over an unreliable medium? So as interesting as the results, if any, is the formulation. Okay. All right. So real-time communication. Uh, if you want to think of a notional application to keep in mind, your average car has about 75 sensors and about 100 switches, and they're connected by wiring on the order of one kilometer. Okay? This is the way the wiring harness is done, is actually manufactured. It's extremely costly, it's very complicated, it's heavy, and uh, lots of recalls. Okay? So can we get rid of the wiring harness and actually replace all of that with the base station in the car? And this is not just fiction. Uh, there are groups actually working on these things. Okay? Uh, in fact, they're pretty confident about the physical layer, okay? ultra, uh, uh, low bit, ultra wideband. Uh, they're more interested in the networking aspect because now you have all these hundreds of gadgets and uh, you need to provide service to them in a very timely way, otherwise your car may do all kinds of things. Okay? So that's the challenge. So think of it that way. Okay, so here's a model. There's an access point. There's a bunch of clients, say capital N clients. And we'll assume the time is slotted, okay, because we want a regularity in some sense. And uh, packets fit within slots. And uh, the access point governs everything. In each slot, the access point sends a packet to some one of the clients. Okay, it's a master-slave relationship. Okay, the model of unreliability, let's take a very trivial model. We can generalize this. Let's just suppose that the model is Bernoulli model. So when an access point sends a packet to a client, say client 3, then with probability P3 it arrives there, and with probability 1 minus P3 it doesn't make it. Just simple, just to get started. Okay. All right. And uh, so then the, the time to deliver a packet is somewhat random. Okay. And these uh, uh, channels could be of different qualities. Okay, now here's a QoS model. Okay. Uh, so clients generate packets with a certain period, okay? And uh, packets expire and are dropped if not delivered within the period. So a packet that comes in at the beginning of a period should be delivered before the end of it, okay? So for example, in this particular trace, there are three periods, and in two of those periods you delivered a packet, in one you didn't. We will say that the throughput is two-thirds. But this is not just ordinary throughput, this is timely throughput because this is the throughput of packets which are delivered by a hard deadline, okay? So now, uh, here's the issue. Let us suppose that every client comes in and says, I want a certain throughput. The little nth client says, I want, I want a throughput of QN packets per period. This is my channel, my channel is PN, here's the period, and, the, uh, and you need to provide that much throughput, okay? On time. Okay, so, so, so there's a binary question here. Given all these requirements, can the access point meet these requirements, yes or no? And we'll completely characterize precisely exactly what an access point can deliver. Okay. All right, so what we're trying to do is kind of uh, work across different time scales. At the lowest level, we have this notion of slot level unreliability. Then we have a more medium term notion of uh, arrivals and deadlines, and we have a longer term notion of throughput. 
Okay, we're trying to combine all these things. Uh, I will not, I will skip the protocol here, okay? You can implement this over uh, 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 Wi-Fi, it's not a problem, okay? The polling mode. Okay, so I, I want to lead you through the story uh, because some of it may be interesting and it's very simple, okay? It's a little theory if you don't mind, okay? So, uh, you can calculate the workload that each client brings to the access point. It's very simple calculation, okay? And uh, it's basically the percentage of time slots that is needed by that client to keep that client happy, okay? Now, clearly a necessary condition is that the total workload should be less than one. Common sense, right? Also called queuing theory. Okay, is it sufficient? And the answer is no. Because something very interesting happens when you have deadlines. Uh, there is unavoidable idle time. You cannot stay busy 100% of the time. To see that, take this very simple situation where you have two clients, period is three, and uh, let us say in the first slot in a period you work on a client and it's successful, the packet reaches its destination. In the second slot, you work on the next one, it's successful. Now there are no more packets in the system. System, there's no queuing, right? Because you don't want to build up delays. So the third slot necessarily has to be idle. So, so there's a certain fraction of time that you have to be idle, you can't help it, okay? So we go back to the drawing board and calculate that idle time, okay? We say the total busy time plus the unavoidable idle time is less than one. And the unavoidable idle time is just simply the excess of slot period over service times. Okay, it's a very simple calculation. Okay, is that sufficient? And here is where it gets interesting. It turns out that that's also not sufficient. There is something else that happens, and I just want to give you an example, okay? There may be some who are interested in the, having a simple example in mind. So take that simple story, two clients, three, period three, and let us suppose that uh, uh, client one's channel is 50% reliable, client two's also is 50% reliable, client one wants 0.876 packets per period, client two wants 0.45. Can the access point meet these requirements, yes or no? So you can calculate the load, workload brought to the access point by the clients, and each of them is less than one, which is fine, and the total is also less than one, which is fine, but you know that's not enough. You need to calculate the unavoidable idle time. That's very simple. If in the first slot you're successful with probability P1, second slot it's successful with probability P2, then you get one out of three slots idle. So that's the idle time. And then you add up the unavoidable idle time plus the busy time, it's less than one, looks good. But it turns out, that's misleading because you have to look into the fine structure of the problem. And this is where things get interesting, okay? Let's throw away client two. Forget client two, we just want to serve client one. Is that possible? Okay, so client one's workload is fine, but now the idle time has increased. When you get rid of clients, idle time increases. The workload may increase, and the idle time actually increases a lot. In, in fact, in this case, with probability P1, if you're successful, you get two idle slots. Whereas if you are unsuccessful in the first and successful in the second, then you get one idle slot. So the idle time is that, and that total is greater than one. So this access point cannot keep both these clients happy. Impossible. So we have to go and look at all subsets of clients. And there's an analogous condition. Look at the busy time plus the idle time. Were that to be the only subset, clearly that should be less than one. And it's not enough to look at just either one of those because one of them is monotone increasing with clients, the other is monotone decreasing, so it doesn't achieve its maximum value at the set of all clients. Anyway, here's the complete characterization. That is necessary and sufficient for an access point to keep clients happy by delivering packets on time. Okay? Uh, so that completely solves the problem of admission control. Because now I know exactly what flows I can serve with QoS, okay? Uh, so if I meet that condition, I admit the flow, the QoS flow. But how do I then schedule things? It turns out there's a trivial policy, almost as simple as the Lou and Leyland policy, which will universally satisfy any set of clients that is satisfiable. Okay, so that's very simple. It turns out that it's based on the notion of debt. So what is debt? Debt is if I borrowed, if I promised you $10 and I paid you $7, my debt is three. So in this case, I promised you a certain throughput, but I may have under-delivered so that there's a delivery debt or throughput shortfall. You just keep track of that. So at the beginning of each period, you calculate the debt. It's huge. 
for one client, slightly lesser for another one, very little for the third one. And then you simply work in that order. So first, you work on the client with the highest debt. Maybe it fails, then it succeeds. Then you work on the next one, fails, fails, succeeds. Then you work on the last one and it fails. Very simple policy. This will meet any set of clients which satisfies that necessary and sufficient condition. Okay, okay let's forget that. And let's even forget this. Okay, uh, so basically we have a complete characterization of uh, admission control and scheduling for access points to satisfy clients with de deadline requirements. And uh, the admission control policy is actually linear. You don't have to look at exponential things. So there's, uh, it's quite trivial to do. Uh, I will skip simulation, okay, though that may be of interest. Uh, but just... Uh, just point out one other thing and then I'll stop. Okay, hopefully it'll contribute to finishing up before time. Uh, this theory actually is, uh, what is interesting is that this framework is extensible. There are interesting, surprising results all around as you try to embellish the model and make it more interesting in various ways, okay? I just want to show you one example and then I'll tell you what else uh, is broadly feasible. So let's consider the case where deadlines are inelastic, but throughput may be. So packets have time value that has to be respected, but your happiness is kind of elastic in the throughput you get. More packets, more happy, okay? Elastic traffic. And uh, so that can be formulated through a notion of utility function for each client as a utility function, which depends on the throughput that you deliver it. And now this throughput is a variable, okay? Uh, and you can think of a utility maximization problem. I want to maximize the utility of a set of clients subject to feasibility. And the feasibility is given by a bunch of inequalities that we just talked about, okay? Now this is actually a difficult problem because there's a lots of inequalities, exponential number. So you can try to decompose this, and this is a completely standard decomposition. Uh, it's been examined by Frank Kelly and various other people. You decouple the client and the access point through the notion of price. So the access point tells you the client what is the price of a unit of throughput with that deadline requirement, okay? And based on the price that, uh, that the access point gives the client, the client decides how much throughput to buy. So that's the interaction, okay? And the client simply does a one-dimensional maximization. It says if the price is uh, uh, psi, and if I buy amount rho, then I'll get a certain throughput that will have a certain utility, but then I pay a certain amount, so that's its profit, and it simply does a one-dimensional one maximization. So that's standard. The access point has to worry about everybody. So it has a, what is called a proportional fair uh, criterion, and it has to maximize that uh, with, given these payments made by the clients over the set of feasible timely throughputs. And that's a very complicated problem because the exponential number of constraints and so on. But what is very interesting is that there's a completely trivial policy that so solves this, okay? The access point simply keeps track of how much attention it's given a client, empirically, historically, and then gives priority according to attention divided by price. So it gives you more attention if you have been underserved or if you've paid a lot, <laughs> actually according to the ratio. And that policy maximizes that complicated objective function. Okay, very simple policy. Solves a very difficult nonlinear convex programming problem. But what is also interesting is that nobody needs to know channel reliability. It gets completely priced out. You don't need to do channel characterization. Okay, and so on. And there's many, many other properties. Okay, so I think I'll just stop there and just tell you that this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of stuff that can be done here. We can talk of more general channel models, we can talk of rate adaptation, we can talk of more general arrival processes, deadlines, etc. cetera. Uh, I talked about utility maximization. You can even talk of strategic behavior where clients lie to you saying, I'm very, very important. And then you can even uh, the, do schemes which uh, are uh, incentive compatible, okay? Uh, you can also do broadcast where you're sending information to a whole bunch of people again with deadlines, but now you cannot get acknowledgements because you get the AC explosion back. So now you have to do things like network coding and things like that. So all of that can be done and I will stop there. Thank you. What's the difference between
the biggest difference is that the C, those, those scheduling problems are deterministic. There's no randomness. So here, I'm assuming that uh, the channel is, is unreliable. And this theory works for that. So this is, so yeah, so, so this will, this solves the problem of uh, time deadlines and throughput under unreliability. So it's more, it could be more general. It could be a wire line LAN, for example, which is random in some sense due to collisions or something. That's also possible. Uh, the, the point I want to say is that uh, uh, the challenge always has been what is the appropriate mix of hard deadline and soft promises, hard and soft and in a probabilistic framework? And over the course of time, there have been zillions of papers written on QoS, but they don't formulate it in exactly the right way. So ultimately, you get something and nothing very tractable comes out. But this seems to be extensible in that the results are simple, nice characterizations, and there are surprising results along the way as you go along. So it's an extensible theory. So it can be applied to other contexts. So, yeah. So in something that's event-driven, that has some randomness, this, this, is, this is what you're designed for? Yes. Yeah, you could apply it in that context, yeah. I should mention that not only are we uh, thanking him for the talk, but also congratulating him on his birthday that was celebrated uh, last week. And this should take us to the last speaker 